For all my viewers uh, who are not from the UK or a land where tea consumption is common, uh, particularly those in America, I cannot recommend getting into tea highly enough. I know in America it's seen as like a San Francisco hipster thing to do, but please trust me, getting into tea is an incredible thing. Because, firstly, tea is ridiculously cheap. You can buy, like, a whole box of tea bags for, like, a pound, and that will last you, like, a month. Like, tea is super cost-effective for what it gets you. The, I mean, all you need is a kettle, right? But you, if you really were desperate, you could even just boil water in a pan, right? But that aside, cost aside, which is, of course, a big part of it, not only is it cheaper than, for example, soft drinks or coffee, it's also way healthier than soft drinks or coffee. Um, tea is essentially, like, you get, if you drink tea, you just essentially get to drink soda, soft drinks, right? I, I realise soft drinks is a, a British term. Soda. Uh, I'm always trying to be pandering to my American audience. I, I want to make sure people know what I'm talking about. But yeah, you basically get to drink as many soft drinks as you want and feel zero guilt because it is um, just leaf water. And finally, it tastes great. And there's so many types of tea, and all of them taste, like, pretty nice. And you can get really fancy teas if you want. Or you can get, like, not fancy teas. You can get ones with caffeine, or ones without caffeine. You can get teas that have certain, like, effects, like ones that are calming, or, or like, good for your stomach, like, good for digestion, like peppermint tea or green tea are both good for digestion, or yerba mate is good for, um, losing weight, although that's kind of expensive, because it's, like, a different, it comes from a tree, not, like, a, a tea plant, um, although I guess, I don't know, yerba mate is nice, but it's not a traditional tea, it's a different thing, it's mate, so I feel, it's, yeah, let's put that aside for now. But, uh, you get valerian root tea, which is, like, a, it literally has, like, some sort of, um, something in it, which is, like, a very, very, very weak, naturally occurring thing that is somewhat, like, GABAergic, if you know what that means, if you, if you know about neurochemistry and shit, GABAergic, um, Basically, if you know what Fenibut is, it's, it's it's like a very, very weak version of that, which can help you if you have something like insomnia. In fact, teas in general, non-caffeinated teas are great for insomnia. But also, loads of teas have plenty of caffeine in them, and they won't fuck up your gut like coffee does. Like, I drink a lot of strong... I'm not going to quit drinking coffee in the mornings, because I am very addicted to strong coffee in the mornings, and tea is just not strong enough. It is less strong than coffee, but you can just drink multiple cups of tea. Like, drinking multiple cups of coffee in a row is too much. Coffee is too flavorful. Like, it's too rich to drink. Like, I couldn't... There's no way I could just finish a cup of coffee and immediately start making another... Well, I have done that in the past, but um, very rarely, because coffee is quite powerful. You'd be very caffeinated if you did that. Whereas tea, if you really want to, you can finish a cup of tea like, green tea, and then just immediately just make yourself another cup of green tea. And green tea is delicious. And because it's not as strong as coffee, you don't have to worry about being wired for the next six hours. You can just drink it, it'll give you a... Oh, these mushrooms look fucking delicious. I love mushrooms. I, You can make mushroom teas, although they're not really made for drinking. They're made for putting in things. But, um... Mushroom teas are good. The uh, I have some some dried. Oh, oh fuck! What's it called? What's that type of mushroom?
porcini. I have some dried porcini mushrooms in a cupboard somewhere. And if I am making like a pasta, like a strong... It, generally, it's a very, it's quite umami-ish, so you should put it in something that you want to have a lot of umami. Like a, a nice, like a, um, something with meat in it, probably. Like something with beef, red meat in it. Like, for example, I put, I put it in, um... Or, or something like heavy. You don't want to put it in something light. It will overpower the dish because it's very powerful. You want to put it in like, like a a, power, a heavy tomato sauce or something like a um, casserole or I don't. Maybe I'm casserole is not the right word. I forgot what it's called. Maybe like a, a like a, a a bolognese ragu sauce or something or like meatballs sauce or something something that can handle the strength of the mushrooms or like a, a a chunky chunky soup that's very good but uh yeah you make it into a tea to rehydrate it and pour it in and it just makes oh man it's so good it's incredible it's it just changes everything i love mushrooms um when was the last time you ate a mushroom please tell me in the comments this is not rhetorical i'm interested um Mushrooms are cool. They have. They're good for you. They're they're nice. They're nice. They're nice people. They 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 got a good sense of humor. You know they they they're fun guys. They're fun guys. <laughs> that was the dumbest shit. I'm sorry. Anyway, tea. So for what I I used to drink um. A lot of, uh, monster. And uh, I stopped drinking Monster, and I replaced it by, I just had a big, like a mason jar, a big glass mason jar in the fridge, right, is this zoomed in all the way? No, it's not, it's just weirdly, it's just being weird, I think my screen brightness is just that low, my eyes have adapted to it, um, but I had this big mason jar that I filled with water, and then just cold water, and then I just put a few tea bags of green, like not even expensive green tea, just like some, some tea bags of green tea in it. And just left it in the fridge overnight with some tea bags of green tea. And then every so often I'd pour, pour myself a, a glass of like cold brew green tea from this. And then every so often I'd add another tea, like take a tea bag out and replace it. Um... And that way you just get infinite, delicious, cold green tea. Because they don't tell you this, but green tea is actually served cold a lot in Japan. It's good... In, if you go to Japan in the summer, like every five seconds, you will find someone who gives you cold green tea. Just for free. It's just like water. It's amazing. Um, so green teas are great. Here's some, I'm just going to talk about some of my favorite teas. I do really like green tea. The, the green tea you get in a tea... Fun fact, green tea actually is supposed to be brewed at 80 degrees centigrade, not 100. So if you don't like green tea because you think it's bitter, um, that means you probably, it's, you've probably you burnt it by brewing it too hot. So you're going to want to let your water cool off for a bit. You might want to use some sort of thermometer to gauge it. Um, yeah, green tea brews are slightly colder than than brown tea, um, and then then it's more like kind of earthy, earthy flavor, um, flowery ish. Like if you get a really nice one, it's quite it's quite nice. I really like a good green tea. Um, but uh. Obviously, the stuff you get in the tea bag is not as good as the really good shit they serve you at, like a nice Japanese restaurant, or matcha if you want to get really fancy. But I don't know if matcha, because matcha is significantly more expensive than regular green tea, and I don't. I mean, it is supposed to be very healthy, but I don't know that it's worth the expense. I'll have to do some experiments. But um, that's the thing. Um, green tea is nice. There were many types of green tea as well. I used to have a few other types of green tea that were quite nice. Um, 
there's also like British type of teas like um my favorite one of those is probably Earl Grey which is what Captain Jean-Luc Picard drinks in Star Trek The Next Generation um he goes to the replicator and he goes tea, Earl Grey hot and then it gives him a tea, Earl Grey hot and now Earl Grey tea is quite singular you can drink it like normal tea, put a splash of milk in it, a bit of sugar but technically you're not supposed to put milk in Earl Grey because Earl Grey tastes quite different to most English teas I don't know what how to describe the taste but it does taste significantly different it is very nice, but I don't put milk in mine. Um, my mum puts milk in hers, but I don't put milk in mine. I do put a little sugar, like a tiny bit, but apparently you one way to serve Earl Grey is with a slice of lemon, which I can imagine be, being quite nice, like a light tiny bit of lemon with it. That would be quite refreshing. So Earl Grey is quite nice. Um... But there's also things like like breakfast tea, English breakfast tea is quite nice. It's quite strong, but it's quite nice. Um, what we would call builder's tea, like PG Tips brand, for example. I quite like that. I used to like, that was what got me into tea in the first place, was that sort of tea. Because it's a pretty basic flavour, but it tastes quite nice. I would still, I still have it from time to time. Quite a nice tea. Um... Other than those teas, I quite like uh, for non-caffeinated teas. I'm a big fan of peppermint tea. Um, I I do like peppermint tea quite a bit. For a small while, I had a very small peppermint plant at my dad's house. And I would very occasionally go to that small peppermint plant, pick off a couple of peppermint leaves and brew it directly into tea. And that tasted so good. It's unbelievable. Um, I would literally just go to the plant, take some leaves off the plant, put them in my cup, boil some water, pour the water into the cup, leave it for three minutes, come back, and you got the nicest peppermint tea you've ever had in your life. It was amazing. But other than that, Obviously, you can consume peppermint tea much faster than a peppermint plant can grow back its leaves. Uh, but peppermint tea that you just buy in a tea bag is pretty much always good. And it's non-caffeinated and tasty. Uh, I quite like that. I do quite like peppermint tea. Um, that was a good line. Uh, uh, other teas... Chamomile, big fan of chamomile tea. Used to make le loose chamomile tea with actual chamomile flowers. Um, that was fun. They were that was tasty. But I like all chamomile tea. It's quite a subtle flavor, but it is also quite nice. I would recommend chamomile tea. One of my favorites. I've said this about every tea, but that's because I love all of them. I am not, here, I'll talk about things I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of rose tea. Rose tea, um, no, it just doesn't taste good to me. So no to, that's going to be a no from me to rose tea. You heard it here first, folks. Rose tea, not very nice to me. Um, also, there's some, like, teas that are brewed from berries somehow. I don't know how that works, but like raspberry tea, blueberry tea, things like that. Not a fan. Not a fan of those teas. Too sweet for me. Too sweet. Um, as a kid, I liked apple tea, and I did just have some tea with apples in it. I can't say I dislike apple tea, but I will say it's not. It's yeah. I would. It's probably. It's more of like a special, like like once in a while sort of thing. Maybe actually no. You know what? I like apple tea. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a good. It's a good tea. Um. I think I've had Valerian root tea before. 
Um, that doesn't taste very good. Uh, or, and it smells like really bad. It smells incredibly bad. It smells like feet. That's not an exaggeration. If you ever get the opportunity to find valerian root anywhere, you'll know because it smells like feet. Uh, not, not good. Not good. Not my thing. But, yeah, the tea doesn't smell as bad, but it tastes really odd. It tastes like a sick... I don't know how it, I don't know how to put it into words. It's very weird to describe tastes with words, but it, it tastes very odd. Um, it was all right, I, but then it made me feel all weird, probably because of the the, the GABAergic properties. It made me feel all tingly. Um, but I would probably have it again now because I had worse anxiety about my body back then. So I think I kind of freaked out because it was making me feel a bit weird. But I think now I'd be more comfortable with that feeling. So I'm not sure. But uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one. What else? I think that might be all of the teas that I've tried. Um... Oh, I, oh, oh, a classic. How did I forget this? If you're sick, if you're ill, if you're sick, well, what I normally do when I'm sick, water, boil the water, get a lemon, two slices of lemon, two to three slices of lemon, depending on the size of the lemon, um, and some honey. Uh, Particularly, this is for a sore throat. Some slice, two slices of lemon, two to three slices of lemon, depending on the size of your lemon. Uh, a decent amount of honey. This honey is not just for sweetening an already thing with that has flavour. This honey is the flavour of the of the tea, and also the honey is what's good for your throat. Um, so, so plenty of honey. Not like a ridiculous amount, but but probably more than you would not slightly more than you would normally put. Um, and some fresh ginger, just some, some a couple bits of fresh ginger, and that that will really help you out if you have a cold. I really quite like that. I actually don't know if it does anything, but it tastes nice, <laughs> um, and I quite enjoy it when I have a cold. It seems to help help my sore throat when I have a sore throat. Um. But this show is so good. It's kind of distracting. If you haven't seen Aria the animation and all the other seasons of Aria, I kind of can't recommend it enough. It's 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 in, it's it's probably the most Iyashike of all the Iyashike shows, and in the best way possible. If you're not someone who can stand really slow, like calming shows, then this this show is not for you but you should watch it anyway um because it actually has a it has deep lore and backstory to it a complex world which apparently is fully fleshed out in the final season which I'm not on yet but I guess we'll find out <laughs> um so I heard it told as the first season is about the, the characters the second season is about the city, and the third season is about the world, because it's not set on Earth, it's set on Neo Venetia, which I believe is on Mars. Um, but anyway, spoilers. Um, even though you'll find that out in like the first episode. But anyway, uh, I swear I had another tea that I was going to talk about. Oh, here's it's not actually a tea. But something I would recommend if you're feeling sick is, um, now, bear in mind, I've only tried this once, and it did not taste good, um, but it, it did feel like it was doing good within my system. First thing is, don't drink this on an empty stomach, because it's quite, quite potent. Um, secondly, I would recommend, so here's what you do, basically the same, but you get water, you get turmeric, Turmeric is really good for you. Get some turmeric, put it in there, and then get some black pepper, grind some black pepper in there, because turmeric is really good for you, but the thing in turmeric that is really good for you 
it has very low bioavailability. Your body can't absorb that much of it at once. Uh, like, not enough to be useful. So, you want to put the black pepper in, because black pepper has pepperine in it. And pepperine is actually what makes it spicy as well. But pepperine is like it helps your body to absorb things more readily so you want to put a good amount of black pepper in there as long with the turmeric and then a stick of cinnamon uh, and then drink that as like a warm a warm drink and uh, that'll do something for you that'll do something for you Um, I don't believe I have any more drinks to recommend. Um, I'm trying to think. No, I think I've gone through all of the, the drinks and teas and things like that. That I have uh, experience with. I guess I could talk about some some nice coffees. Um, personally, I'm a fan of most coffees. <laughs> I, um, I even, I am someone who can both go to a proper Italian coffee place and enjoy some proper Italian coffee. Like, like I can enjoy... I, I really enjoy espressos with no sugar and that sort of purest shit. Like, I'm the sort of person that buys... Here, I will show you. I will show you the sort of person I am. I'm this sort of person. Here, let me take you with me for a second, as we travel out of this room. I can believe it's in here. Yes, this is the sort of person I am. I'm the sort of person who buys coffee beans uh, non-grounded, grinded, non-ground, because they taste better when you grind them yourself. Because as soon as you grind the coffee beans, you're releasing all of their flavor, and so then if you leave them like that, in like a powder form, um, they're gonna lose their flavor. They're gonna lose a lot of the, the depth of the flavor, so. So I have a nice blend, a nice blend of whole roasted beans, um, which I quite like. Huh. Um, that's the sort of person I am. But I also, I don't really do this actually. It's been a, come to think of it, it's probably been like three to four years, but um, so I don't know if I would necessarily like this anymore. But I was very into Starbucks for a while. I used to get a mocha frappuccino at Starbucks. Mostly because that is how I got into coffee, is my mum would buy me that. And I was like, oh, this coffee isn't so bad. It tastes like sugar. Because it was all sugar. Um, and then eventually I got into nice coffees. But it is, you know, I'm not someone who's pretentious about liking, like, th I don't think I'm better than anyone else for, for having opinions about coffee. I'm, I'm just trying to share the love, man. Coffee is so delicious. Everyone should experience it in the best way they can because mm -hmm. it's so delicious. But also, if you don't, if you, um, if you're, if you don't put, if you like, like coffee, but don't love coffee, if you more like coffee as something that wakes you up in the morning, which is a completely legitimate way to like coffee, then I probably wouldn't recommend going and buying more expensive artisanal blends 
However, if you're someone who is very into coffee for for flavors and stuff, if you really like the flavor of coffee, and I'm not talking Starbucks coffee, I mean like if you like the flavor of coffee coffee, um, then it's probably worth looking into some nice blends and maybe getting yourself a coffee grinder because it does it significantly improve, like it's definitely worth it. Um, but I said like not Starbucks coffee as if that I'm trying to be condescending here but I'm not being condescending there's like Starbucks coffee and that sort of genre of coffees the kind of very sweet and very complicated coffees maximalist coffees with a lot of things in them like a mock, like like a mocha frappuccino you know <laughs> um you know they they're fine there's no, there's nothing in the law that says you're not allowed to like them. They are quite different from from the sort of purest coffee, where it's pure, it's just coffee beans. But that doesn't mean they're bad. They're just different. Um, I I don't judge. I, the only reason I would judge you for getting Starbucks often, and the reason that the same reason that I don't get Starbucks often anymore is because Starbucks is quite expensive for what it is it's like like almost insultingly expensive for what it is um that's the reason I would I would that's the reason I don't go to Starbucks anymore it's because I cannot afford that shit but I do understand why you might like it um So that's good. I quite like, in terms of copy preparations, in my day-to-day -day life, I, I don't, um, I don't put milk in my coffee. I, I take it black, like my men. <sighs> um, I, I, I have a French press, aka a cafetiere. Uh, which I use to make coffee in the mornings and um, I just put a, a little bit of sugar in it one one teaspoon of sugar and I drink it black and it tastes good and that is not out of any pretentiousness that is literally just because I like it that way I it feels I don't know there's such a weird pretentiousness with coffee I feel like it shouldn't exist. Almost everyone drinks coffee. Why is drinking nice coffee associated with being pretentious? I just like coffee. Leave me alone. So, I don't like milk in my coffee when I wake up or doing it at home very much. Now, the reason for this is mostly because I used to put milk in my coffee, but then I did some research and I found out that apparently milk actually counteracts caffeine to some degree and makes it less strong and at that point in my life I was very obsessed with having a very strong caffeine hit which is what led to me being very addicted to caffeine well I was already it's complicated but um I was, I was very much like I'm I it takes me like a long time to wake up in the morning and so I was like I need a strong caffeine hit so I was trying to work out like I would always put so at that time in my life, when I was at my dad's, I had a, a a different type of coffee thing. I sometimes I used to use a thing, a French press, but then I had one of these. Hold on, I must I must find what it's called. Oh yeah, it's too good. For, it's distracting me. It's like a thing where it bubbles. I turn on my think light. Um, coffee make machine. Coffee machine. <laughs> it's not a coffee machine. Coffee bubble thing. Is it a percolator? Coffee bubbler. Does it have a name? It's this thing. This is what it looks like. Here. Bam. Perfect. 
I wish it had, I wish I knew what it was for. They look like this. Uh, I, uh, yes. Tell me what it's called, please. Well, whatever. I had one of these things, and what I would do is, um, in, inside of this thing, it's kind of hard to describe, but essentially it's two parts that unscrew in this middle here. The bottom bit you fill with water, but then there's a little, like, cup with holes in the bottom that you put coffee grounds into, and then you screw it all together, and then when you boil it, you put it on the stove, and the water boils up through the coffee grounds and sprinkles out of the top into this new section, having been imbued with delicious bean juice. And, um, it's, it's used for making espressos, and, uh, you're supposed to make an espresso with it, <laughs> except I would not, or you're supposed to make multiple espressos with it, except I would just make an espresso the size of a cup of coffee and drink that every morning. So that was my experience with coffee for years, is having coffee in the form of a full cup espresso, which was a lot of coffee. Um, because I would fill the thing all the way to the top with coffee grounds, which is a fuck ton of coffee for one cup. Um, like, looking back on it now, that is a lot of coffee for one cup, but that's because it was very strong, because it was an espresso the size of a regular cup of coffee. Um, which was pretty based, if I, if I must say so myself. Um, it tasted very good, I really liked it. Um, why did I start talking about that? Oh yeah. I didn't want to make, mix it with milk at that time. Not just because I didn't want the caffeine to be messed up with it, but also I just kind of... I used to have it with milk, and then at some point um, uh, I was just like, I'm going to try it without milk. And I was like, this is not significantly worse. And then from then on I just never had milk in it again because... It seems like a waste of time to go to the fridge, get out the milk, and put it back. And we didn't always have milk. Uh, so, that's how I started drinking my coffee without milk. Uh, I would put sugar in it, though. Um, and then I came here, and then I did the, the French press thing, and that's essentially it. However, just because I don't drink coffee with milk at home, does not mean I don't drink coffee with milk when I'm somewhere else. When I go to a cafe, I will normally have... Well, I read somewhere that in Italy, you would never have a cappuccino past 10 a.m. And I'm never awake before 10 a.m. So I think every cappuccino I've ever had has been against Italian law. But, um, fuck the Italians. I drink a cappuccinos all the time because they taste good. Uh, I love myself a cappuccino. A good cappuccino. It can't be a fucking... Some people don't know how to make a fucking cappuccino. But I have a few cafes that I like that are actually run by Italians who know how to make a good fucking cappuccino. And I go there when I want one. Um, now, the few times I've been in Paris... I have had a cafe au lait in the mornings and with a with a fucking croissant and in my opinion that is the perfect beverage that is the perfect beverage confectionery combination cafe au lait with croissant dipped in the mornings I truly believe the French have life figured out um, it's sadly quite diff- I haven't had a nice croissant in a long time. I would very much appreciate going back to France to have- have myself a café au lait and a croissant in the morning. That would be delicious. But, alas, it is not so. But that is a good experience. Um, other coffees I've enjoyed... Um, I will from time to time enjoy a mocha, 
but uh, it's not really that much. It just is. It's not as good as, in my opinion, it's not as good as a hot chocolate, and it's not as good as regular coffee. <laughs> but I do sometimes like it. Um, I also, I was gonna say something and immediately forgot what it was. Fuck. Um. I got distracted by Aria. Um, coffee. What was I going to say about coffee? Ah, yes, Irish coffee. Irish coffee is one of the greatest inventions by mankind. If you don't know what Irish coffee is, it's Google it. Um, but Irish coffee is great. Oh. Another thing, if we're talking about the greatest inventions of mankind, is affogato. I don't know why I pronounced it in that weird way. Affogato. Affogato is just pure bliss. Um, I was kind of surprised to find out how many people don't know about the existence of this, because you will find it at a lot of Italian restaurants in the dessert list. Um, An affogato is... Just prepare yourself for this, okay? An affogato is a scoop of vanilla ice cream with an espresso poured over it. It is the best thing. The espresso becomes sauce for the ice cream, except you get the hot espresso and the cold ice cream. And plus, it's like... It is actually the best dessert ever invented. I'm... I'm... I am not a complicated dessert person. I like, for dessert, I normally have a few bits of, like, just chocolate. Just pure chocolate. And I know some people... Chocolate here is much better than chocolate in America. I'll just put it that way. When I went to America and I had Hershey's, that shit tasted like trash. But then I was like, maybe it's just Hershey's. So I tried some of the normal Cadbury's that you get here, and it tasted like trash. I don't know what the fuck you guys do to it, but it tasted like trash. So, yeah, normally I just have chocolate, a a little bit of chocolate for dessert. But affogato is basically the only other dessert I will have. It is incredible. I can't but again, to explain to you the absolute bliss that is eating an affogato, just make it, like, either make it or just go to a fucking restaurant. It's amazing. I think that's all I have to say about coffees and teas. There must be something else. I'm trying, really trying to drag this past the 10-minute mark so I can get them ads. Bro, I've been talking about coffees and teas for 30 minutes. This video is going to be like five hours long. Um, I don't believe I have anything else to say about coffees and teas. Um, if you have any interesting co- coffees or teas that you would suggest, please leave your suggestions, especially for interesting teas to try. In the description, in the description, please edit the description for me. Please hack into my account and write them in the description of this video. Thank you. I'm reading House of Leaves right now, and it's got me thinking about how rubbish Homestuck is. Because here's this guy writing from the perspective of multiple different people. And not just the perspective of multiple different people, but multiple different people at multiple different times in their life, right? And, okay, to be fair, he changes the font, right? The font the font changes between the, the different people. However, I'm pretty sure even without the font, you could tell who was t- writing, which fictional character was writing this, just because of their their style of writing. Like, they have very distinct voices. You can tell they're different people, even though it's obviously all written by the actual author of the book. But in this fictional universe, they're both written by different people, right? And it's just got me thinking about how rubbish Homestuck is. Because there's Homestuck, and in order to distinguish between the different people, they all have to have their own little gimmicks about how they fucking write, which just make it basically impossible to read, like... You're constantly being pissed off by people writing in fucking leet speak or some bullshit, right? 
because this guy, what's his name, Andrew Hussey, can't fucking write. Whereas this guy is doing not only elegant prose, but elegant prose from two separate writers with entirely different styles. Like, you got this guy with this font, um, I forgot what his fucking name is, but fortunately it says it at the front. Um, Johnny Truant, right, who writes quite flowery language, quite, um, uh, very personal language, very much about emotions and feelings, versus Zampano, who's like writing in a very academic style, in a well, in a pseudo academic style, I guess, in, uh, but but also very autistic, very detail oriented, and very, you know, you you got and it's it's fucking nuts. It's crazy how nature do that. <laughs> And it's so well done. Like, it never makes you question that these are two different people. Just from the writing style. Like, just from literally how they write. I couldn't really tell you exactly what it is that's their idiosyncrasies. But he's clearly thought through these characters very well. Whereas you look at Homestuck and there's like 50 different characters, but all of them write exactly like Andrew Hussey. I'm assuming that's his name. I might be wrong. But all of them write exactly like him. Right? Because that's the only way he knows how to write. And so he has to resort to gimmicks, like having them writings be in different colours and having them write in different stupid, like, leet speaks and stuff in order so you can actually tell them apart. You know, there's two different types of, of books that are long because they're cool. Right? Because being long is cool. And there's three, three types of long, long fictions. Number one, fictions that are long because, um, and they just happen to be long, just because the story they're telling is really long. I'd put like a series like The Lord of the Rings, for example. It's just a it's a it's a big story they're telling, or you know any of those historical epic type shit like The Odyssey or something, Homer's Odyssey. Long as fuck, but that's just because they're telling a really long epic narrative. Then you've got the other type of long thing, which is something that's long because being long is cool. Now there's two subcategories of that. There's 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 a uh, aut- there's what I I've coined autism long and normie long, right? Or oh, normie long is homestuck. Something that's long because it's up its own ass and it's like look how look how I can out meta myself for no goddamn fucking reason and just because being lo- having it last for a long time is something that that makes me look cool as a writer. Or you've got this long, House of Leaves long, Autism long, which is something that's long because it's literally going, like, absurd levels of detail, but, like, uh, so Zampano, or whatever, how you pronounce his name, is supposed to be kind of insane. Both of the characters are supposed to be kind of insane. And so they go into a lot of detail about things that you wouldn't normally go into a lot of detail about, but you can tell they're passionate. Look, if you want to understand it, you've got to read the fucking book. I can't explain it to you. But, like, there's, it's, it's not long just because it, ha- it, it wants to be long for the sake of being long. The entire book is, is a commentary on, the, on how people read books. Alright, well, I feel like absolute dog shit right now. I don't really know why. Well, I do kind of know why, but I don't know why I why. Um, I had a premonition that if I had, if I drank beer today, I would get a headache. And it came true, but then I just felt like shit. I think it's because I drank like four or five beers. Let's see. Maybe it was that, maybe it was four. I think it was probably around four in um, quick succession and then immediately stopped drinking. So I'm essentially getting a immediate hangover. And of course my phone runs out of charge before I can finish making a fucking video. I hate the fact that my phone runs out of charge so quickly when I'm recording. But anyway. I'm watching Aria The Natural, which was a good idea. I don't know why. I I watched... When I watched Aria The Animation, I really liked it. I'd forgotten that I really liked it, but I started watching Aria The Natural, and then I was like, oh, shit, this show was actually really good the whole time. I remember now. So anyway, my plan now is that I'm going to make some tea. 
some some non-caffeinated tea because it's like 4 a.m. and I had actually fixed my sleep cycle. I know, shocking. I actually went to sleep at 12 for a couple days and then one, and then I slept for like 13 hours, and now it's like 4 and I'm not tired at all. So I'm going to try and drink some like calming chamomile tea or something, see what I've got in the cupboard. And, and relax, but I, I feel like absolute ass. And I, my eating's been weird. Like, I had a big dinner, and I, I, then, like, a couple hours later, I felt hungry again. Like, I had a big plate of pasta, of bolognese, which is, like, a filling meal. And then I felt hungry again, like... Pff, let's count, shall we? Maybe five hours later, four or five hours later, I felt really hungry again. Not really hungry, but hungry again. And so I had some fish fingers, aka fish sticks. Uh, and uh, and then I just felt weird, because I was like, too full. But I also had felt hungry, so I don't know what, I don't know how I did that to myself. But it, it, I might also feel weird, because I had some DXM yesterday, and I'm drinking today. But I didn't have very much DXM. I had a, basically a threshold dose just to, you know, mostly because I had a cold <laughs> that I wanted to actually use it for its intended purpose. And that's the third reason, is that I have a cold. Like, I, I am doing... Oh, shit. Mom, my laptop's out. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's like God doesn't want me to fucking make this cup of tea. I was going to be like, oh, this is going to be cool. I can watch Aria while I'm making my tea. It'll be nice and comfy. But no, my laptop's on 7%. Why is it so low? It was plugged in the whole time. What the fuck? It was just charging really... St I don't know how that happened. It was full a second ago, I swear. Oh, well. 7% available, yeah, wow, well, I don't know how that happened, so I'm gonna make this tea, and I'm gonna bring my other, this is why I have two laptops, people are like, why do you need so many laptops, it's not so many, it's just two, and this is why, this is the exact reason why, so, I guess, thankfully, Firefox has this thing, where you can send a tab to another device, so that's what I'm gonna do, I'm going to send tab to device. No, thank you. And bam, now it shows up on this computer right here. Fucking epic. Uh, I tried to watch a show earlier today. What time am I at? 13 minutes. 50 something. Um, I tried to watch something earlier today. And it was so obscure that it wasn't on Kiss Anime, it wasn't on Nine Anime, and it was on Nya, Nya.si, the torrenting thing. But it only one of the torrents had a cedar. It had one single cedar. And the second I started downloading it, um, the second I started torrenting it, the guy just vanished. <laughs> So it's like 0.1% downloaded, and then there was no more cedars. So there you have it. If you happen to have a copy of, um, oh fuck, what was it called? Let me, let me see if I can find it. I highly doubt you happen to have a copy of this because it's very obscure. Uh, but if you happen to have a copy of... Um, let me see the full name. Hello? Hello? Uh, Amuri in Star Ocean. Right, which had a different name a second ago. <laughs> it was called, like, Amuri something Umi. Hoshi no... Oh, something like Hoshi no Umi no Amuri. Yeah, that's it. I know Japanese. Hoshi no Umi is Star uh, Ocean. And, yeah, there you go. Hoshi no Umi no Amuri. Bam. I'm sick. Uh, but if you happen to have a copy of that anime, and you're willing to send it my way, please let me know. But it's... For, I doubt it, because I've never even... Uh, yeah. But I'm just going to watch Aria instead, because it's also a very good show.
I feel sick and I have a headache and my heart is palpitating um, and no one has uploaded any like like two YouTube videos have been uploaded today I've had fuck all to do all day what have I even been doing with myself today what, what have I actually done I literally don't I could not tell you I think I watched an, an episode of a TV show with Richard Ayoade, who is one of my favorite people. Um, I made some Twitter posts. I found out Jackie Chan disowned his daughter for being gay. So that's kind of sucks, because I thought Jackie Chan was a cool guy. Turns out... <laughs> anyway. And other than that, I literally could not tell you what I've done today. Um, I think I watched like two YouTube videos. I don't, how the fuck? Oh, this is what I've been doing. I've been watching this. I downloaded the like four hour long Digi's Crib from 2016 and I was re watching it. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> Um, that's what I've been doing, now I remember. Uh, when I was reading this manga as well, um, it's by the same person who wrote GA Design Class, uh, but it's like a gothic style, it kind of somewhat like Mushishi or Kino's Journey, like a traveller in like a, although this is more like a medieval, like early Victorian type I don't know. It's very cool and gothic. It's called, um... Uh, fuck. What's it called? Um... Uh, the, uh, it's a, it's a sh shoulder... Shoulder, uh... Shoulder a coffin. Kuro. That's what it's called. Shoulder a coffin Kuro. Bam. Uh, it's a good... It's good. It's got a very good aesthetic to it. Look at this character design. Oh, oh, hell yeah, boy. Oh, the glasses. The, the all in black. The hat. The eyes. It's great. And I like the art style of this, this mangaka. And as you can see, all the borders are black because it's just edgy like, edgy like that. And she carries a coffin. Let me see if I can find a good image of her carrying her coffin. There you can sort of see it. She carries a coffin on, the, on her back the whole time, which is fucking sick. I feel like I've actually tried to read this at one point, like a long, long time ago. But I would recommend this manga, even though I'm only on the second chapter. That's what I've been doing. Uh... Well, I went on a bit of a tangent there. What was I supposed to be making tea? I wonder if this... I don't think it's going to last. I think this is going to cut out before I can finish making my tea. Anyway, it will just be me standing around waiting for a kettle to boil. So I'll just pause the recording and come back to you once I've made my tea. Just in case you might find it interesting, this is the tea I'm going to be drinking. It's called Sleep. Spiced apple and vanilla with chamomile and passion flowers. Sounds delicious. I have some, like, normal chamomile tea as well, but I figure I'll give this a try because I've never tried it before. So I'll do the full review in a second. Hello and welcome to No Thank You's Tea Reviews. Today we're reviewing whatever I just showed you. First thing I want to note is this cute little label. If the camera will focus, you may see. On this side it says Twining's Sleep. On the other side it says to steep for three plus minutes and has a nice picture of some leaves. I thought that was a nice detail. I really like this. I really like that. I have added a small teaspoon of honey to this as I usually do for the herbal teas when I drink them. And then we're going to give this a shot. Actually, before I taste it, let me give you a nice, a nice look at the colour of this. Hopefully you can see it's a nice amber. But anyway... Oh, it's quite apple-y. Hmm. Mmm. Huh. But 
take another sip before I give my full interpretation. This feels like tea for people who don't like tea. The first thing I will note, I think it could have done with even less honey, perhaps no honey at all. I don't think it actually needed the honey because it's very fruity. The passion flower, the vanilla, the uh, apple, it all has a fruity, sweet flavor to it. So I think the honey was a mistake. Too much sweetness. It also has a certain spice to it. I don't really know how to describe it. It tastes a little cinnamony, but I don't remember seeing cinnamon on the box. But it definitely reminds me of, of apple tea that I had back when I was in Turkey a long time ago. It's quite apple-y which is not a bad thing necessarily, but it doesn't really taste like tea. And that's kind of why I like chamomile, because it tastes like tea. <laughs> like the pure chamomile. Chamomile is a very delicate flavor, and you really can't taste it behind the quite bold flavor of the passion fruit and the passion flower, I mean, and apple. It's certainly not a bad tea. I will enjoy sipping this tea. A bunch of shit that I've kind of been paying off making videos about, so they're all just going to go in this, which I've decided is now going to be a really long video. The first thing is, uh, I remember a while ago I was trying to fill in this entire chart. Um, as you can see, it's a very long chart, and it's, I've already filled in some of it. Uh, like I marked in red what I've already seen and I just wanted to go through and see if I've seen anything else by accident that's on this um, nothing from the top that I can see um, oh, I don't know. Higurashi, still haven't seen Higurashi um, Aha, there we go. Well, I'm currently watching this, but I'm in a market anyway. Where was that? There we go. Is this how you do it? I've completely forgotten how I was marking these. Uh, maybe it was... Oh, it must have been like this, right? Something like that. Or like this. Wait, why? Can I... Why is everything... I, f I fucked it. <laughs> this? Oh, go away. There we go. Um, even though I haven't finished it, but there you go. Pen- oh fuck. Sak- Sakura saw pen Nakanajo. That sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen that. Sakura saw pen Nakanajo. Let's find out. Plan to watch. No, I haven't seen it yet. Uh, let's keep going. Shakugan no Sana no Jojo's. I, I, I am, I'm probably not going to finish Jojo's, but I've seen the first season, so I'll start with that. Kyokai no Kanata, I've seen that. I saw that when I was marking this list before, so I don't know why I never wrote that off. I think I thought it said Kawa no Kyokai, because they sound similar, even though they're not the same show, which took me a while to work out. Uh, the word God only knows. What's that again? I forgot what that's called in it, in Japanese, but no, I haven't seen it, I don't think. Um, for my no, 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 no. I feel weird. Oh, it's because I'm on DXM. <laughs> I forgot about that. Gunslinger Girl. Oh, wait, oh, it's the manga. Um, 
Tsukiyomi, I guess this means Tsukiyomi Moon Phase. I have seen as much of that as I want to watch. His and her circumstances, actually, I don't want to mark that as done yet, because I'm going to come back to that. Space Dandy, haven't finished it. Um... Saquon no Quasar, no, no, no. Patlabor, no. Yeah, I've only just started Neander 7. House of Five Leaves, never seen that, never even heard of that. I've watched two episodes of Bobble 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 Bobble. Um, I've also watched four episodes of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Found it boring, but I might come back to it. I've seen like one episode of Precure. Oh, I haven't seen Keep Them Out Light or yet. I've seen two episodes of Figure 17. Or anything you had to really look for? No, not really. I'm watching Fun Fun Pharmacy right now. I have definitely seen at least one early 2000s show that I've never seen anyone mention. That turns into an arrow when you do that, that's weird. I've definitely seen at least one of those, so I'm happy to mark that. But, well, it does say shows, but I've seen multiples, actually. I've never seen anyone mention Bottle Fairy before. I've never seen anyone watching, mention, um, uh, fucking, oh, what's it called? Pugiru before, so that's two. 90 shows you've never seen anyone mention? No. No. Um... None of these. I've seen a couple of of animated gifts by novice animators on Twitter. I guess I can do that. <laughs> I've seen one pre nineteen sixties anime, which is like the first anime ever made. Uh, but that's about it. So actually, all in all, not that many that I had to mark off. Oh, I've also started watching Futuko Alternative, but I haven't finished it yet. Um, I I'll keep that un unmarked until I finish it. But there we go, that's the update on that. So I've been re-watching Lucky Star lately. It's such an interesting show. I, in the past, thought the first few episodes of Lucky Star were some of the best anime ever made. And after that, it just sort of turns into how he references the anime. And I think I misremembered exactly how many Haruhi references are in this show. There aren't as many as I remember. Um, but still, I think the show has a very interesting place in history because of various reasons. Firstly, this show is carried by its character designs so hard. Like... I can watch a... This, okay, let pause. This shot has no background. It's just... The entire show is just dialogue scenes, but, like, it's just characters talking. And yet, because of the character designs are so appealing, I do not care, and I will watch it for as many hours as I need to. They're the perfect blend of cartoony, but cute, and emotive... Like, they're perfect for what they need to do. Also, it operates in a very interesting place in the history of cute girl shows or four girls in high school shows. <coughs> Where it was after the genre had been established, but before the genre had really solidified. So it both had things to build upon and still had time to be influential had things to explore that hadn't been explored yet I don't know it's a very fascinating show mostly in my opinion the show is good because Konato is good but also I don't think people realise how much of the comedy falls flat because you're distracted by the fact that 
Conata is good. Like, like half the jokes don't work. It may just be because they don't translate very well into English, which could well be it. But like half the jokes seem to be not that great. Oh uh, yeah. It doesn't matter, because in telling the joke, Conata makes a, a silly face, and I'm like, give me more of the silly face, give me more. I want to hear pink hair glasses speak again. Who cares? And that's my opinion on Lucky Star. Also... It's great. <laughs> um, but it's not... I feel like no one has actually, that I've seen, done a particularly accurate analysis of why, in particular, Lucky Star is so good. I wouldn't necessarily be able to do it either. Or well, I probably could if I spent a long time on it, but... Like... There's things like JoJo's references. <laughs> there's a lot. Of, there's quite a lot of JoJo's references actually, which is a little much. Um, maybe it's just actually maybe there's less than I'm thinking. It's just because I happened to watch two shows back to back, two episodes of two different shows, and both those episodes, one of them was Lucky Star. Both of them had JoJo's references in it. Um. But also, it makes me nostalgic, of course. Even though I wasn't into anime in 2000... What was this? Seven? I've actually forgotten. Hold on, I need to check when this came out. Yeah, I was right, 2007. I was definitely not into anime at this time. Not even close. But, um, it does make me nostalgic for an older internet. Oh, also, it's just really well, the, uh, the animation direction, which is a very specific autistic thing to think is very well done but the animation direction is really good as in it's actually for a KyoAni show not that animated like it's not like every frame has a bunch of sakuga shit in it but like what they chose to actually sh it's somewhat like k in that even though it doesn't have a particularly high frame rate, for example, like, the actual frames that are there convey so much emotion that it's definitely well animated. Like, it's of it's the sort of good animation, quote-unquote good animation, that can only exist in anime where limited animation is the norm. Because each frame has more impact because there are less frames. I really like Lucky Star. I've been, I've been really into it. It's much easier to watch than I gave it credit for. And it's significantly better than your average cute girl's comedy. I don't know. Mostly, though, most of the show is just Conata is cute. That's like a solid amount, a significant amount of the appeal of the show is just Conata's cute. Like, her mouth turns into a triangle, and I'm like, bro, just give me more. Just continue to do this. She turns around and the Seinfeld theme plays, and she's like, what's the deal with Haruhi? And her mouth turns into a triangle, and I'm like, Yes, 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 yes. This is the best. That's that's lucky stuff for you. Oh, and of course the OP is incredible. One of the best anime OPs. 
I don't know why I'm doing a review of Lucky Star in the middle of this like 25,000 hour long video. Lucky Star, a show from 2007 that no one's cared about for like 10 years. What's wrong with me? I want to talk about one of my favorite YouTube channels and uh, my absolute despair. Uh, so this, this, this guy is James Willems. This guy is Bruce Green, Adam, um, his second name is like Russian. What's his fucking name? Adam Kovic, that's it. Adam Kovic, Elise Willems. I think that's Lawrence Sontag back there. I know all these guys. I've probably watched m more of these people in a room together than any other group of people in a room together. And t collectively, they are slash were known as Funhouse. And before that, though, excluding Elise, they were they were part of a YouTube channel called Inside Gaming, not IGN, uh, IG. It was a machinima channel, not a channel that was partnered with machinimas like an MCN. It was a channel that literally was in the, in the building that machinima was. They were owned by machinima. They were a part like a subsidiary of machinima. And, uh, if only I knew, because I've been trying to figure out for a long time exactly when I started watching them, but we're talking at the very least six years ago. Um, maybe more. But, uh, they used to be on this channel called, called uh, Inside Gaming, right? And it was, it was mostly, it started off as a gaming news thing, and then it became sort of a, a an edited Let's Play thing. Uh, the thing is, right, so a lot of, a lot of complicated stuff happened with them. They were one of my favorite channels, but then Machinima fired them all, basically, or they all, like, th collapsed under their own weight because Machinima was failing and stuff, and they eventually, I think I might have found them because of another channel that had a similar thing, which was called Machinima ETC, uh, who also anyway it's complicated but essentially they they collapsed and then Rooster Teeth was like uh, hey you can do the same thing but here instead and they were like sick and they did it and it was originally mostly Bruce, Adam, James are like the main three and Lawrence was like an additional person and then there was Spool uh, and there was uh Joel, Joel Rubin and Sean Poole, aka Spool, uh, right? Uh, and after they moved to Rooster Teeth, slowly the channel's been changing, right? Which is fine, things change. For example, Elise joined, where is she? Over here, Elise joined, who's James's wife, but, you know, you'd assume, like, oh, one of them, their wife joins, that's going to create a weird dynamic, And but it's actually, she's very funny, She's got her improv chops. It was a it was a little awkward at the beginning, of course, but also apparently she was working there for a significant amount of time before she started being on camera. Because there's a lot of people that are in Funhouse that just aren't the main crew that are on camera, like editors and stuff like that. So apparently she was there before. So basically, she's she's a good addition to the team but she wasn't a part of the original inside gaming crew uh, so i believe the first one to leave was was spool spool left funhouse uh spool left funhouse spool was was great i liked spool a lot but he was kind of a side character i would compare him to maybe like nadoka from kaon right like definitely a cool character that you like but the show is still essentially the same base show uh if you remove her right joel a little more of a major character than that i would compare joel to ui uh like more of a main character however joel also left later than Spool. This all takes place over at least four, a four-year period, people leaving. So Joel left as well. And then there was a gap where, where no one really left for a while. And everything was fine. Everything was great. More and more editors were joining. It was becoming more of an operation. They had, like, 
Sex Swing, which was a, a full, like, full length, uh, uh, like, animated series that actually wasn't very good, but, like, it was, it was well done. It was well, like, it, the production values were good, even though it wasn't very funny. But then they had Arizona Circle, which was, like, a sketch comedy show, which is re actually really funny. I would recommend. You probably, you, you might have even seen some stuff from Arizona Circle just running around the the interwebs there was a they did a sketch about cucks that they got spread pretty far uh but but then so then elise joined at some point uh and then but none of the main cast had changed cast none of the main cast had had changed yeah i was right the first time aside from elise joining the the core three this is essentially your your main the this what you're seeing on the screen right now this is essentially your 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 fucking your fucking moogie your fucking uh mio your yui and you, you know this is this is the main cast of the show this is this is the main four girls this is right Obviously not. They're not girls, but whatever. And everything changed when Bruce, this guy, recently left. He recently left Funhouse. This is a very flattering image. Um, if you part of like I recommend Funhouse to people quite often. I, I, in fact, this video is one of the ones I recommend people start with. This is one of their more pop like this might be even their most popular video, but I recommend starting with this video, some of their old GTA Let's Plays. I have a couple that are especially good, um, and uh, a series they did called Talking Stalkings. Uh, but but I've part of the appeal of them for me is that I've been just watching them for so long that I feel like I get to know them so well. Even though obviously I don't know them as people, I only know the characters they portray, like their amped up personalities they play on the on their YouTube show. But like I feel like I have a connection to them, and this is what's just, what's sad, is that that after all these years, finally one of the main cast left, Bruce left, which is interesting because. Just before that, a new person had joined the main cast, someone called Alana, uh, the, which is interesting because they've had, for example, Lawrence, right? Lawrence was never originally supposed to be an on-character personality. Same with, actually, Spool as well. Lawrence was like a behind-the-scenes producer kind of person who would just sort of, like, occasionally show up on the news show, uh... And people liked him, and so they kept putting him in more stuff. And eventually, he became like a part of, essentially, a part of the main the main cast. Even though he right, but Alana was someone they they actually brought in from outside specifically to be an on camera person, um, which is interesting. And she's like she had a like has a, her own relatively successful YouTube channel outside of Funhouse. It's interesting, but and Alana's fine. I don't have a problem with Alana at all. I thought, I, obviously, same with everyone else. Same with Elise. Same with um, Lawrence. Same with Spool. Uh, not Joel though. Joel's always but Joel is ridiculously charismatic, uh, and like musical theatre kind of guy. So he's kind of he doesn't feel awkward at all. But like when Alana first joined, there was a bit of awkwardness, and then. She's now sort of absorbed into the group dynamic, uh, of course. But that's beside the point. What I'm saying is, for the first time in history, one of the main people left. One of these three. These are the main three faces. And Lawrence, sometimes. But these are the main three faces. And Bruce left. Bruce quit Funhouse. Uh, there was a... And just to do his own thing, to start his... I think he's starting his own company or something. He's currently, like, taking... It's, it was so, the way they did it was so weird because he was like I'm taking a sabbatical I don't even know what a sabbatical is I think it's an American thing I've never even heard that term before but he was like out for a while and then he came back for a while for like a week and then 
there was they have a podcast called Dude Soup, and then on the podcast it was like, okay, Bruce is leaving, uh, which is funny because during this his break, um, they made it very clear they were very conscious of saying like he's just taking a break, he's not leaving Funhouse, even though I think during the break is when he decided to leave because he was like, oh my my life is way less stressful because they really work themselves very hard in, if you watch I think even I don't remember if it's the most recent or the one before the most recent dude soup you're not going to watch it because it's like an hour long podcast that people you don't care about but they actually went into detail about a specific comment that asked like they were replying to a comment that said like I don't understand how you guys are so stressed and they were explaining like the 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 long and intense process that goes into making one of these videos and how they make at least one a day, every day of the week, sometimes two a day, because they're also involved in multiple channels. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's a very stressful job. Uh, this is the only time I'll believe a YouTuber when they say that their job is stressful, because these are not your standard gameplay, sit in front of a camera for 10 hours, and then just chop it up into pieces and re re release it in 15 minute segments. These videos are, he as you can see from just this graphic, like these videos are heavily edited uh, and like cut that each, it, it, rather than, you know, they're all cut down from like one or two hours of footage to like 15 minutes, which is like TV show level of, that's like Eric Condre's show type shit where he records for like two hours and then cuts it down into 15 minutes. Um, but yeah, that's beside the point. What I'm saying is Bruce left, and this was a somewhat of a shock because he's been there since the very, very, very back in the day, inside gaming days. He might have, I think he was the first or second, like he was, he was from the very, very beginning when I was like a real, like a child watching his videos. And now he's left Funhouse. And that was the beginning of the end because shortly after that, and this is what really hit me because Bruce is cool and his dynamic is, is great. I like Bruce. Uh, they, they all fit into it. But Lawrence, which is this guy. Hold on, let me find a good shot of him. Here he is. Lawrence, right? He he plays a character on the show. He he plays up parts of his personality. So he's he's out of all the character of all these people, probably the biggest nerd, right? But he's mostly a nerd for like old PC games. However, he plays up his nerdiness for things like anime, uh, as like a to make him into a more comedic character, which is very funny. Even though he doesn't actually as like. To me, someone who is all too knowledgeable about anime, it's clear that he's like not actually that knowledgeable. For example, he didn't, he like, you know, you, you, like people will send him anime figures, fans will send him anime figures and he won't know who they are. Like he, he has a figure of fate, uh, of um, Saber from Fate, but he doesn't know who it is and stuff like that. Um, which is fine because it's a character that he's playing. He's he he never claims to actually be really really into anime. He's he just thinks it's funny to play up the nerd, weeb character, and it is funny. Uh, but he is the newest member to leave, and he was always my favorite because he's like his the character he plays and his real personality is like he's the least normie out of all of them like this james he's like a goes to the gym all the time you can see he's like bulked up he's into professional wrestling like whereas lawrence is clearly not a normie and him leaving is just it's i don't think the show has the same appeal without these two people like, one of them could leave and it might still hold up, but the two of them leaving, even though they have new personalities like Alana and, like, technically the group dynamic is still there and they're still making videos, the 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 cause is, is, is now significantly different. Because even, even though people like Joel and Spool left in the past, which was very sad, they were always also updating the cast. There was there was people like John, John Smith. Yes, his name is actually John Smith, who's an editor, who is also now sometimes in videos. You know, people like that. 
um and they are also funny and you, you know they have a good relationship with everyone it's all fine it's all dandy people like omar who show up occasionally oh and of course matt peak who apparently was there since the very beginning but but only started showing up in videos like a couple of years ago maybe a year or two ago um Matt Peake is cool, but Matt Peake is not a comedic powerhouse like Lawrence and Bruce are. Matt Peake is is a uh he's a guy who is not particularly comfortable on camera, and that's the joke, is that he's not particularly comfortable on camera, and he's like kind of a quiet keeping to yourself guy. Which is fine because he's a he's a side character essentially. It's a fun house. Like he's he he is an editor. He he does his, his main role is editing, and he shows up in videos occasionally, right? Uh, whereas Lawrence and Bruce are at this point mainstay personalities. Lawrence wasn't it back in the in the the inside gaming days necessarily as much as of a mainstay personality as Bruce is. But, but like the these the, this dynamic the Adam Bruce James dynamic is the core of Funhouse to me and Lawrence and Elise are like Lawrence helps to balance it out because all of these guys are, are like very LA like not very but quite LA type people if you know what I'm saying like whereas Lawrence grew up in like uh a conservative household in the south but was really nerdy and really into pc games in like the 90s when pc games were abnormal to be into and like uh that sort of shit and had like super christian conservative parents like he he is actually a real person you know he helps to ground the group by having particularly to me but relatable personality right not that the other guys don't but especially like Lawrence was always my favorite my favorite guy on the sh- on the, on the funhouse team also he's he's really into drinking uh, he drinks a lot of alcohol i think he doesn't anymore but he his he definitely does though like when they do drunk gameplays he always drinks way more than everyone else uh and i could i can relate to being that one guy who's just way drunker than everyone else rambling about nerd shit. Like, it, it seems like every time I'm, I'm at a gathering with some of my friends, I end up I end up drinking way more and just start talking about fucking anime or something. I'm just like, bro, Katsuhiro Otomo, though. Katsuhiro... I, I, yeah, that happened to me at some point. So I can, I can relate to him a lot. Uh, even if it's just his, a character that he purposely amps up on the show... I even though I believe that he's like it's he he plays up a character it's very hard to describe it unless you're acutely aware of how his character's developed over like however many years he's been involved like they even talk about it in an old episode of of Dude Soup from like 3 years ago when apparently Lawrence asked like should I go should I go deep in on this, um, uh, like, character of being kind of pretentious, like, gamer's gamer guy, and everyone was like, no, don't do it, and he did it anyway, because <laughs> that's the, the, the joke is, they call him the quintessential gamer, he's like a, he's like a, very pretentious, very, but it's all, like, a character that he plays up, he's actually a very nice guy. And, you know, Bruce and Lawrence leaving Funhouse, it's like the soul's gone out. And the thing is that I cannot feel angry at either of them for leaving. I, I, I kind of want to, but I can't. I, I literally can't be like, man, how could you do this to, the, to, to me, the fans? It's like, no. Clearly, this job is very stressful. Clearly, you've been doing it for so... You've been doing it for many, many years, right? You've been doing this for more years than I've been doing anything, really, right? I completely understand why you would want to move on from this. Especially because this kind of content is, like, not necessarily as profitable on YouTube as some other types of really clickbaity, low-effort content are. 
like clearly you have if 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 you're not a hundred percent passionate about it after so many years i can completely forgive that and relate to it and like i can't force myself to be angry at, at anyone for making that decision especially because even though it's a career in the public eye it is just a job and you should be allowed to quit your job whenever you like without any backlash like if you if you don't like what you're doing every day or if you feel like you could be doing something better there's no reason you know i can't possibly feel anything but you know i can't say anything but i wish you the best in whatever you do in the future however both lawrence and bruce have their own youtube channels where they are currently both producing more content than they have before because they suddenly don't have fun house to make right and both of their youtube channels aren't very good which is kind of a shame for me to say but bruce on his own without the others to bounce off of is less funny which is kind of to be expected because it's like taking one member of a comedy duo and having them do it by the, like they're gonna be less like the it's intrinsically less funny when it's no longer a highly highly edited video with lots of gags that only work in editing and a bunch of other clever people to improv bounce your improv off of cut down to instead one person live streaming for two hours and then just releasing that as a video in a whole chunk there's obviously going to be less entertaining and the same with Lawrence it's just sad it's it's just sad as someone who grew up with these guys to see the dream finally end and this isn't the first time I've experienced it because I didn't know about Funhouse for the first like two months of its existence so I thought when Inside Gaming fell apart uh, I thought this is it this is the end of my favourite YouTube channel and I don't get to go it's just over now and then when I was going back and re-watching it and I saw a comment saying, so glad they managed to start Funhouse or whatever. And I was like, what the fuck? Wait, what? And then I went on the Funhouse channel and saw that there was like a month's worth of videos, new videos from these guys in a new place that I could watch. And it was, um, it was like, oh my God. And now it's over. Properly over forever. Because they're not going to rejoin up. This isn't them leaving together to form a new thing together. This is them going their separate ways. It's like Spool. Joel left and I believe Joel was on like SourceFed. Joel left to go to SourceFed, which then SourceFed collapsed. Uh, I wonder if Joel ever wishes he stuck at Funhouse rather than leaving to go to SourceFed. I don't know. Spool left, I think, to pursue his own streaming career. I don't know how that went. I haven't followed Spool since. Um, I think Spool has the potential to be an interesting character. Like, he, he, he could have carried himself. I don't know how he, how, how that went, though. Because I... Whatever. But, like, it's not the same. It's not Fun House. It's not Inside Gaming. No matter what, like... There can't be another YouTube channel that does the same thing. The only channel that can do anything similar is, like, the Achievement Hunter channel, which is, like, way, way significantly worse because it's targeted at a younger audience. That's one of the reasons why Funhouse is so great is because their main audience is, like, um, significant... Like, the main audience... They even had an argument with Achievement Hunter over this that... Achievement Hunter's audience is, like, young teenagers and preteens, whereas Funhouse is, like, older teenagers and early 20s. I don't know. I I just would recommend Funhouse. The old video is always going to be there, but, um... It's certainly sad. It's certainly sad that that this is over and it's not dying it's you know I feel like it would be better if it was just like 
if it was just like, we're, we're ending Funhouse now, goodbye, I would have closure. But instead, one by one, the people that I've spent years of my life being entertained by are leaving. And the soul of the group is dying slowly and being replaced with new personalities who are more more Zuma, more millennial. And it's like I don't get the closure. Anyway. This has got me depressed now. I love this guy though. Look at this guy. Look, these old videos will always be here for me. But you can only rewatch the same Funhouse videos over and over so many times. I don't know how to recommend this to someone. I would just... Just watch this video. You will know if you like Funhouse. You watch 1-2 drunk, drunk Nintendo Switch gameplay. And if you dislike this video, if you if you think this video is all right, like semi funny, I there's still hope for you. If you actively dislike it, you probably won't like any of Funhouse's content. And if you love it, then um, good good luck, <laughs> good luck with the rest of your life. There's a lot of other shit to watch. Um, if you love it, then go watch Talking Stalkings all four episodes and then go watch these two specific drunk GTA 5 videos which I don't remember what they're called but you'll probably find them because they're probably the most popular ones and then then just go watch their regular non-drunk content and then eventually you'll start watching things like Dude Soup when you're really into them because Dude Soup is not fun edited or funny it's mostly a behind the scenes type of thing anyway I don't know what I'm on about I just I just Funhouse has been a big part of my life for a long time, but so was Machinima ATC, and I eventually just completely stopped watch. Like I used to watch Machinima ATC every morning with my breakfast for like at least two years, probably longer, and that was a kind of mediocre news show run by Machinima until they left Machinima and started. Internet Today, which was essentially the exact same show, just not owned by Machinima. Um, and when they made the switch over, it was like something clicked in my head. that like, oh, these guys have never actually been entertaining. I don't know why I was watching them. But if you if you watch Internet Today videos, you'll see they all have really clickbaity titles and thumbnails, which is just, I don't know. I can't feel like they're I, I still like them, even though I don't watch them anymore. Anyway, I love I love all the members of Funhouse, past, present, and future. I love I love I love Alana. I love Bruce. I love Lawrence. I love James. I love Adam. I love Elise. I love Omar. I love John. I love. Um, I forgot some of these other guys' names because there's fucking too many of them. Matt Peak, I love Matt Peak. I fucking, I'm trying to remember this guy's name. I think his name might also be John. I like the other John. I think his name is actually also John. Yes. Um. Yeah, they're all cool. It's over now, I guess. Well, what can you do, eh? There's plenty of YouTubes. You know, you can't... You can't reproduce your childhood joy. You can't reproduce your childhood joy for your entire life. It's just not possible. Eventually, times change. I guess it's a good lesson that about the transients of all things. So there you go. That's the lesson you should get from this segment. That, um... Everything is transient. Everything you love will die, but not in a satisfying, dramatic way. There you go. 
and that's okay. It's okay for things not to be like a Hollywood movie. I I ain't I ain't normally uh, I ain't normally someone who's uh, into uh, into all that uh, Illuminati Masonic shit. You know, I I ain't normally someone that's, that's necessarily into that sort of shit. But but there's some there's some freaky deaky shit going down in Kazakhstan, my friend. There's some freaky deaky shit going down in Kazakhstan. Let me tell you. All right, let's let's zoom in here. Let's zoom in here. This is just Google Maps. You can find it yourself. Capital city of of Kazakhstan. All right, let's let's take a look at some of this freaky deaky shit. Yo, what's going on here? What's going on here? This shit looks like something out of fucking. Fucking Utena. No, they got the fucking bird lake. They got the f- <laughs> motherfuckers got the bird lake. Motherfuckers got the pyramid. Motherfuckers got the white pyramid with the black top. You gonna tell me that this ain't some freaky deaky Masonic shit? Bo, bo. Look at these patterns. Uh, this, this is. I wish I could turn it sideways so you could see it a little better. Here we go. I'll just turn my phone sideways. Look at that shit, boy. Look at that shit, boy. That's some that's some freaky deaky shit right there. This this looks. No one builds things like this. <laughs> no one builds things that look like this. What's going on here? What's, <laughs> what's going on here? Why is there a big? Look at this. It's a fucking like a cross or something that goes all the way across. This shit's freaky deaky. Look at this shit. This looks like another fucking bird. They got all these circles. But, and then you run on here. Firstly, that looks like an eye. That's fucking me up. That looks like an eye. It's eye type of shape. And then you go down here. You got this fucking thing. What's going on here? And look how big it is. Look, these, these are fucking like apartment blocks. Massive apartment blocks. And look how big this fucking space is. This is an arena. And this is how big this space is. What? This is some Epcot shit. Look at this. This is some Epcot shit. What is going on here? Bro, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. Who builds something like this? This has got to be... This is this is some freaky deaky shit, my friend. This is some freaky deaky shit. Look how big this place is. This is a normal house. This is, these are normal ha- I think these might actually be bigger than normal houses. I can't really tell. These are like big suburban houses, it looks like. Right? And then you compare the size of these multi-story houses to the size of this shit. Look how fucking big it is. Yo, Kazakhstan, you wildin'. You wildin'. Yo. You couldn't just build something further away from the river. You had to fully divert the river around your fucking thing. I don't know, man. There's some... I don't want to call Mason Masonic bullshit. I don't want to say it's Masonic bullshit, but uh, I don't really know what else it could be. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's probably just rich people. But um, man, yo, why, why you do this though? Look at this bridge. Why would you do that? That's kind of sick. But like, yeah, I wonder if we could. Look at this shit. They can't just build a normal road. It's got to have all these squiggles in it. What is going on? I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. What the fuck is happening? Everything looks like it was built to be viewed from above, which is very odd. Cause like you would never be able to get a sense of like this this thing, for example. Where is it down here? This thing. There's no way you would know what like you couldn't get a sense of that unless you were looking at it from a satellite view. So they built this shit purposefully just so that it looks on Google Earth and looks cool. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Yo, you you people are crazy. What is going on here? Let's 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 see if we can find anything else crazy. What's this? What's this thing? What the fuck is this building? Nur Sultan something it's got a it's got a gift shop. Oh it's a railway station. Okay, that's that's okay. That's not that's not that bad. That's not that bad. That's not that weird. This is a little weird. It kind of looks like a half-finished... This looks like City Skylines. This is exactly what something I build in City Skylines looks like. Even with all these random empty bits where I didn't finish roads and all the fucking... Like, this shit? What the fuck is going on here? 
Yo, they they are they just let an architects do anything these days. <laughs> they just uh, man, if you're an architect, listen. If you want to be an architect, I'm telling you, go to Kazakhstan. Go to Kazakhstan right now. They got Epcot. They got Epcot over there. What's this big thing? Is this is this a building or is it a park? Oh, that's a lake. It looks like a lake of some kind. Yeah. I wonder if that's man-made or not. That's very strange, bro. This is crazy. I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. And it's just in the middle of Kazakhstan. I know Kazakhstan is not the most wealthy country in the world, but look, it's just surrounded by nothingness for miles and miles and miles in the middle of Asia. Come on, come on, Kazakhstan. What are you doing? What else we got over here? There's gotta be some more good shit. What's this? The, the, oh yeah, the tower. That's that's some dope shit. You know what? Let's go. Let's do some street view. Let's do some street view. Let's let's let's. Oh, this is the presidential palace. I want to see what's over here. What's going on in the fucking bird lake? It looks like an ibis. Whoa! This shit's crazy. The fucking pyramid. That's this is the reason why I was like that's some. Oh, this is a fountain. Oh, you can't even walk. It's just a photosphere. That's odd. The fact that it's called the Palace of Peace and Reconciliation, that's especially odd. That's a strange name for something. All right, let's take a look. Oh, we're in it. Is What? Why, why did you build this though? <laughs> why did you make this though? Is this, is this a spell? What's going on here? Man, these people, these people whiling. Look at this shit, boy. I wanna know what the fuck this place is. I wanna know what's going on here. Can I, can I street view over to here? It's called the sun. <laughs> The Botaninyechiski, sorry, I don't mean to mispronounce names, I'm trying my hardest. But I guess it's a bot botanical garden, but none, none, it's all nothing. It's not a botanical garden. It's just a fuck off big park that has a really weird design for some reason. Man, oh look, and this is the guy who took the picture. What was he drinking? Drinking some, some nice juice. Tea, maybe. Nice, nice. I respect that. I respect that. They got this big cup in the middle. Yo, this has to be some weird symbolism for something. There's no way they built a park with these symbols and we're just like, nah, it's just a regular park. Oh no, man. I don't know, man. Yo, wait till Alex Jones finds out about this shit. What the fuck is going on down here, man? What is going on here? Let's go inside. This has to be inside, right? Yeah. Like, why have you got such a huge building? What? Oh, it's sponsored by Coca-Cola, of course. They got all sorts of modern art and shit. Yo, this is like... Iran in the 70s but it actually exists now no wonder the country's poor all the rich people fled to the capital city and started building the fucking <laughs> I don't know this reminds me of the the architecture of the rich people in that film Meet, was it called Meet the Robots something like that something about robots it reminds me of that it was, I think the rich guy was called, like, Oswald or something. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Meet the robot. Is it called Robinsons? No, that's a different thing. That's a different cartoon that came out about the same time. I'm combining two things. There's Meet the Robinsons, and there's one that's called, like, the robots or the robots. Robots film. Yeah, it's called Robots. And then the rich people, yeah, it looks like this. It looks exactly like this architecture, which looks like fucking Epcot. Look at this shit. 
Man, they were fucking whining out there in Kazakhstan. Boy. I oh, don't know, man. Is there anything else? Oh, this is the airport. Oh, that's pretty close to the city. Nice, nice. Yeah, I like I like some good city planning. Clearly, this place has has some good city planning. Have the airport. That's probably the closest it could possibly be without noise polluting. I respect some good city planning. Uh, however, it's it is a little freaky. It is a little freaky deaky. Anyway, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. Go explore for yourself, because there's just all sorts of crazy shit going on here. This is this this part is freaking me out the most, because this seems to have purposeful symbolism. That is like, y'all know, y'all know. I've turned American. Y'all know, y'all know. Birds looks like an ibis. Could be a kingfisher. You know that has importance in Masonic culture. Same with the the pyramid with the black top. With white white pyramid with the black top. Uh, this this is this reminds me of something I've seen before, but I don't know what it is. Like this shape with like the half cre like the crescent and the spike, and I don't know what it reminds me of, but it reminds me of something. This looks like some shit you would sh make up in a movie, not some shit that is real. I don't know. I mean, chances are, 9 out of 10, it's just some really insanely rich people who just have way too much money and are commissioning crazy works of architecture because they're just incredibly rich and their government's corrupt. That's my... That's that's the, that's the logical answer. But it is much more fun to pretend or... The, but to be honest, both things can be true. Maybe the rich people believe that they're doing some symbolism like this is like they they clearly thought they were being real smart when they made this shit they clearly thought they were being smart so i don't know it's very opulent it's a lot of opulence whoa does it go underneath yo i gotta check that shit out uh there's a good place to go maybe like here i wonder if this is underneath it oh no that's, that's the one i was at before like here maybe here? That's gotta be it, right? See, it doesn't look that... that Like, in in real life, it doesn't... It looks fucking weird, but it doesn't look as pristine as it does from above. I wanna know what's down here. Oh, I can go there. Oh, wow, it shot me, like, 12 miles in the wrong direction. Sick. And now put me back here. So there's actually only two points. And when it says you can go over there, it means you can go 12 miles in the wrong direction or none at all. Maybe we can get a good look. I don't know, man. When someone builds a pyramid like this, they're trying to demonstrate their wealth for a reason, right? Like, that's some someone who's very wealthy and wants, wants everyone to be in awe of their power. I don't know, man. Some you don't you don't build pyramids otherwise, right? <laughs> you don't build pyramids. <laughs> Your pyramids are so obvious, and it's a factor as well. I've just noticed. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough of me being being paranoid. It's not even paranoia. This is some cool shit. I'm not trying to pretend that this that this is not like like some architects like a couple of architects were like i'm so fucking glad i live in kazakhstan right now and then probably like i don't know i bet they don't have very good work safety regulations yeah you see like all these little winding paths and like little shifts like this they don't serve any practical purpose because this just ends in a dead end like all of this shit is completely impractical and only exists to make a cool pattern when you see it from above. So strange that they would decide to make something. And there's a grotto? Of, like a folly? This reminds me of... Well, this is kind of sick, though. That's pretty sick. That's a pretty sick piece of artwork. The way it turns into a triangle. This reminds me a lot of walking around... Um... 
Bro, are you seriously tell look at that look at that silhouette and tell me that is not some Illuminati shit. Bro with the fu this is crazy. This is crazy. Anyway, this reminds me a lot of walking around a place called Stourhead. Let me see if I can find some footage of it on YouTube. Stourhead. It's an it's a national trust which is like I guess the equivalent of it's like a government thing that protects historical heritage sites. Basically, there was this really rich guy with a lot of land, and he commissioned a bunch, like, like all, like a bunch of, like this land looks really beautiful, but that's because it was basically carved in I don't know what time period, but old, old time period when he was like a lord. And like all, like this island is like all this shit's man-made basically. All the like they moved a bunch of earth and they planted all these trees and shit to make it look like the most idyllic place. And it looks really incredibly beautiful, but it's also got all these weird like buildings. They call them follies. Uh, I believe they call them follies. They just they don't serve any practical purpose. They're just supposed to be like like this one is like a it's it's like the guy. It was during a period where. Um, there was there's a lot of interest about like the ancient Egyptians and shit. So he made this obelisk with a sun worshipping the sun thing on it. But like you can see it doesn't look anything like an Egyptian obelisk. It's clearly made by someone who's trying to imitate it. Um and then there's a big house, of course. And a lot of like he owned all of this. And someone still owns it. Someone still lives there. But yeah, you got all this he was really into all this Greek like Greek style architecture and shit. Like uh, like I think this is the like a temple of Apollo or something. Uh it's a really great it's like a really beautiful place to walk around. I'd love to go there again sometime. Oh, and there's this dam. Yeah, it's really beautiful, but it reminds me a lot of this. Like this like that is the modern version of this. And there's this castle, which he literally built. It doesn't serve any purpose. It's like a big watchtower. The only reason he built it is so that he could have, like, some reference point so that when he would, like, he could ride his horses to there and back uh, with his mates and, like, race and shit. Like, if you go there, there's a big cut-out chunk of the forest going in one direction where they used to run along with their horses. You can see it just about off-screen there. But, yeah, it doesn't serve any purpose. Everything's kind of, like, smaller scale than it should be, which also reminds me of that a thing in Kazakhstan so it's definitely just some rich people showing off their wealth and using like references to classical Egyptian and Roman and all that shit architecture and Greek architecture you see there's one there, there's one there he's really, he's really into that shit um, but yeah it really makes you think <laughs> it really makes you think about the gap between the rich and poor eh? Of course it's England, so it's actually raining most of the time. But it, it is incredibly idyllic. This person is not even showing it. He's just fucking... There you go. It's got a lot of trees. Lots of nice trees. Anyway, I was just showing that as an example. That's what it reminds me of. Like, someone who's just really, really rich and, and wants to show off that he's, like, incredibly rich. Or it might be multiple people who are really rich and want to show off that they're incredibly rich. Because, like... Oh, no. It's kind of ruined by having a car park right next to it. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Exactly like in tune, but I'll fucking take it. Yet again, I'm baffled by the majority of people's just pure stupidity and inattentiveness, willingness to believe what they chose to believe at first sight rather than doing the most minimum amount of critical thinking. 
There's this video, it's been flying around online for a while now. It keeps popping up once every few months. It's basically like some English gangsters, roadmen as we would call them, having a beef using Snapchat or whatever, except that it gets, it gets funny because he's like, then ends with one of them baking a cake for the other one. It's quite funny, quite a little funny little sketch because that's what it fucking is. It's clearly a sketch. Firstly, um, like none of, obviously it's got like subtitles. Um, they're clearly acting like, like it's very obvious that they're acting. The stuff they're saying is like non sequiturs, like not something you would act like it's clearly, you can tell it's a sketch, but, um, even if let's say, I don't know, you're American or something, you don't, you can't gather the subtleties in, in a, an English accent like that. That's understandable. But you know what's not understandable? What's, what's this is in the corner the whole fucking time? You may not be able to see it because of Twitter compression and my phone doesn't focus very well. But that is the BBC3 logo, right? And it actually very clearly says BBC. You, you can't see it because my phone isn't focusing which is very annoying because it's ruining my entire point. There you go. You can see it clearly says BBC the whole time in the top corner of the video through the whole thing. In fact, at the beginning of the video, it even says at the bottom a warning about the strong language in this that they have to show because this is literally an advert for a sketch show on BBC Three. And yet you scroll down to the comments of this. There's so many people taking it seriously. Are you stupid? Are you stupid? I mean, I know obviously there's people who know that it's not real, but like, really? Really? The thing is, though, is it's not even difficult to find British people that do talk like that. You may have seen this video of, of like something similar, in, but this one's real, because in fact, this group of young men have made multiple videos in this style. Um, this is just the one that blew up, but there's actually two or three of them. Uh, but this one is so blatantly fake, it literally has the BBC logo on the top corner the entire time. And yet somehow people really think it's real. I don't understand how... How is such a thing possible? How... I don't, like, is that not really obvious? Oh, also the editing. That's the other thing, I guess, that people don't, that people don't realise is, so firstly, maybe this is just something that I would notice as a little bit of an artist. But, so the camera, right? I don't know how to explain this. Okay, there we go. There was, there was an example. So this edit, this is not an edit that would, add, like, what is this? Where's this little glitch edit? None of these things are real. That's that's not how things look in the real world. That's called editing, my friend. Also, can you not tell from the lens that this isn't filmed on an actual phone? I can tell very easily that this isn't filmed on a real phone. It's, it's actually filmed in a real camera, probably a DSLR, and cropped. Because the lens is too, the lens is, um, I, I don't actually know what, what the f technical word for the lens is, but the lens is all wrong for a phone lens. Um, anyway, that's, I don't expect you to notice that, 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 especially if you're watching it on a phone or in the dark or something. But come on, the fucking BBC logo in the corner the whole time and you think it's real, are you stupid? Well, this video was supposed to... This is the second time I'm recording this segment. Uh, this, uh, just so you know, this video was supposed to be a spiritual successor to Birds 3, but I, uh, I don't know why I'm apologising for making a video that's only two hours long, but um, two hours long video, it was supposed to be like three hours, four hours, but whatever. It doesn't actually matter. The reason it's not that long is not because I can't be bothered to record things, it's because I don't have space in my life. There's no device I own. Actually, come to think of it, there is, but it's too much effort for me to bother to unload 
two hours worth of video so I could like it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to edit it all together because I don't have enough space on my computer so it's just gonna be a, sh a, a two hour long video sorry I'm so, I'm so sorry what do you want me to fucking do okay um so there's that and then I wanted to talk about uh, I went on a long tangent before it stopped recording and I accidentally deleted this so I have to I must sum it up essentially I'm pivoting I'm doing a pivot. Uh, my content, it may not be getting stale to you, but the 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 way I put it previously when I was recording this segment is that my content is very unfocused, which is how it's not an accident. That's by design. There's not really a focus. There's not really a particular subject um, that I that I'm talking about. Uh, I mean, subject is in like subject object type thing not subject as in like a, a category um, like like my videos are all over the place and that's fine and fun and d delirious and cool but it's limited because you can't go into too much detail about certain things and after how people responded to the Hidamari sketch video and stuff like that and uh, people seem to like my analysis uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna go all in on it for a little bit, not permanently necessarily, it depends. But I'm thinking I'm gonna go a little harder on analysis. So this is basically, if you don't like anime, <laughs> if you don't like anime, then you may want to unsubscribe. Or actually just just wait for a little bit, because I, I, I'm sure I'll get bored of anime analysis eventually. But my idea is to essentially start making some anime analysis videos for serious mode or as serious as, as a no thank you video gets uh, I keep checking you know too many times I've been ruined by talking to a camera and then thinking I finished only to turn around the camera and realize I haven't been recording or it stopped at some point that's why I keep turning the camera around it's happened to me too many times um, but yeah I'm gonna be focusing more on, on analysis uh, this is essentially the end of the chapter which is why this video is called that um, and f a new chapter of, of uh, uh, anime analysis videos and probably other media as well but I'm, I'm going to be actually going hard and specifically making content that is more focused more more narr narrowed down to actually talking about something as opposed to just talking um, uh, not necessarily because it's a better style of content it's not just because it's a different style of content and I wanna if there's one thing I don't want this channel to become it's stale I don't want to be making the same shit forever even if the shit I'm making is is crazy experimental shit I don't want to be making that forever I want to always switch it up sometimes you gotta do what Boris did when they made new album you gotta sometimes the best noise you can make is pop and that's what I'm gonna do. Essentially, I'm gonna make my my to the fairest, but but for YouTube, it's gonna be uh, your, your, your standard noise pop anime analysis critique shit. You know your standard one that everyone is knows about. Uh, but but what I'm saying is be warned because there's gonna be um, more appealing more appealing titles and thumbnails in the future probably I, I am going to switch up since I'm switching it from something that is uh, more delirious to something that is more lyrious <laughs> I love the word lyrious I've just it's not a real word but I like it you got delirious on one side you got lyrious on the other side uh, something that's more lyrious uh, there's gonna be more more consonant more consonant titles and thumbnails and stuff like that and uh, probably like rather than what I've been doing up till now which is just to not that there's I'm not saying either one of these content styles is better or worse um, but up till now I've been essentially trying to make as few people watch my videos as possible to, to as 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 princess plunderphonics would put it alienate my fan base as much as possible right uh which is fine and good and cool but i've been doing it for like more than a year probably like in a year and a half now and it's just the same shit so i want to try and switch it up and make something that has that actually tries to draw you in 
not because I want to get more views or because I want to start making money or God forbid I want to become a YouTuber. That's just disgusting to me. But just because it's a challenge, it's a it's an it's an a nice challenge to try and make something that actually sucks people in as opposed to the other way around. Just to, to, to change up my content, to make something that, that might be more fun to make or to just different to make a different experience. So I don't want to see no one saying, oh, no, thank you, sold out or whatever. Because it definitely, it's not like I'm going to start making typical YouTube video style content, but it, it's just going to probably be a little more... Um, it's it's gonna be something where where it might look on the surface like pop music, but if you if you if you dig down, you'll find that it's not. Or the other way round. I don't really know what it would be, um, but but it's, it's, it's just just something new. Just trying to try something new, and this I think this is a good idea, a style that I can probably pull off with my skill set that will actually challenge me and. Uh, teach me new things and also just be a nice change for this channel, you know maybe like a, a more ma a mature, I guess not the, but again, I don't want to say like this is the end of, of delirious content, d d trust me you you will see very quickly you will see what I mean so I don't, I know no one's going to watch this far into a two hour long video, but um, you, you, if you if you are watching this, you don't have to worry about me making normie content that's impossible such a thing is is impossible uh but it it will be more focused that's what i'm trying to say uh, so you can look forward to that because it, it might be pretty cool if you liked my hidemori sketch video or other things i got a bunch of ideas that's the other thing is like it's it's kind of hard or not hard but meaningless when I'm just talking about random bullshit in my videos like it doesn't feel coherent which is fine and that was the aesthetic I was going for but it but I feel like I want to try and do something that has something else to say and if I have an actual subject that that I can focus on that will that will help me out with that so that's basically all I wanted to say this is the end of the chapter we're beginning a new chapter and um that's about it.